Hello and welcome to another quick video talking about the anomaly stack solution and how you'd use some threat intelligence. Um, so I'm going to talk about a couple of things here, primarily around what would you use it for? How would you start using some information and start using something like stacks to get further details around that? Um, well, that's what I'm going to do here. So think of a scenario. In this example, I have a, a, a very unusual domain that uh, one of my users has been trying to connect to. I've got some firewall logs for that. Uh, it's very unusual because I'm in a business uh, that I have almost no communications going to and from Vietnam. So in this example, I see this domain and it's got the .vn extension. So I want to look some more, uh, look up to try and understand a little bit more of what that is, what's going on. So of course, I could log on to the uh, Stacks platform and just takes me through to some nice pretty graphics, which is great. So what I've got here is I can see the dashboard, which is all very pretty. But what I do need to do is uh, like click and go into the activity to start to dig into what this particular unusual domain is uh, and what do I do with it. So I just click the activity tab and we go in and we see some more details. By default, we see the date range for the last seven days, which is you know useful. There's some, some plenty of information there. We see all severities of all uh, confidences, which I'll come back to in a minute. Um, but importantly, we see lots of uh, medium priorities and high priorities priorities and IP addresses and I can see so there's a domain there I see 800 pages wow I've got lots and lots of data here this is going to be very difficult for me to to, to plow through and understand what's going on but what I do have is a nice little search here now of course I've copied this particular domain from my firewall logs and I could just paste it in there uh, as part of this so I've just pasted that in and you'll see that it automatically searches for this particular observable or this indicator and, and I can see that the like I say this is a dot VN it's very suspicious and I actually get a couple of hits here now this is most likely because there's a couple of references to it maybe an updated uh, uh, bit of information subsequent on that initial uh, publication of the information but it doesn't matter which one I click on here. So what I will do is if I click on this, it'll actually take me through to the Stacks portal to look at further details of what's going on. So I should just click on that. Uh, you have to register for the Stacks uh, portal itself. So fill in your login details and go from there. I've already done this. It'll actually guide you through the process. So don't worry. And what we do have is we get some information about what's going on. So it's now useful for me to start going through of what I'm being presented uh, to me in this interface and what does it mean? So first off, let, let's look at this. W what's the confidence and what's the severity? Uh, confidence means our confidence around the data itself. So how much confidence have we in the accuracy of the data? It's scored out of 100, so 65 is pretty high. So we're reasonably confident here. Severity refers to the security impact of this. So in this example, we can see that the severity is very high. It's scored from low to very high. So, okay, now we're starting to get a bit of information. Now this, this multi dimensional view saying we are actually pretty confident this is very bad okay fair enough let's look a little bit further on this one we can see the status is active oh okay so we do actually differentiate between active inactive and false positive so this is something that's active now it's been reported oh, okay interesting it's part of a malware domain so now we're getting some much more valuable information what does it mean what's the reference to this what's what's the relevance uh, and the context around this particular aspect here we can see that this domain this indicator is actually linked to a particular IP address which is a link and I can go through and see some more details on this IP address too. But remember, you know, and in a lot of cases, certainly with malware, uh, the, the link between the domain and the IP address will constantly change. Uh, when was this last updated? It was actually updated pretty recently. I'm recording this in early February, so this was actually only updated a, a few days ago. Uh, we can see that it's from Vietnam. We can see the whole, uh, the actual organization that uh, hosts this. We've even got some external links out to some external uh, sources to look at some further detail. But what we do have is this great tree to start looking at why are we thinking some of this severity and confidence scoring here well let, let's understand the GOIP so there's lots of information here uh, we can see the locations we can see what it's based on uh, what's the ASN and so on that's useful but what we can also see now is where the relevance is coming from so okay Google safe browsing doesn't actually have anything on this one but you know what web of trust does and actually from a privacy trustworthy and uh, reliability point of view it's actually indicating this is very poor for for us. In fact, actually, from a web pulse point of view, it's actually already even indicated that it's some, some suspicious malware on this as well.
So, okay, fair enough. We're starting to understand a little bit more of the picture here. Well, let's scroll down a little bit further. And, oh, here we go. Here's the intelligence around this. So we've got multiple reports. Actually, this goes back quite some time. Uh, this goes back uh, according to some uh, jigsaw, some abuse.ch, FSI SAC, uh, some SANS data. Uh, we can see some information around this with regards to what's being reported. We can see there's a mixture of confidences. We can see that, in fact, it's reporting the same IP address here. But this has been reported by multiple different sources that this particular domain is, is uh, somehow malicious in a way. Now, we can see that there is uh, some changes in active and inactive. Uh, so what we're starting to understand is that things have gone active, things have gone inactive. Infrastructure for actors will change over time. It will be reused. It will be identified. It will be taken down for a period of time time to avoid detection. It will come back online again. So we can see that uh, this malware domain has been reported as, as active and inactive over multiple points there. But ultimately, as part of the scoring, what we have done is we've actually ultimately scored this as having a fairly high confidence as you can see, there's a mixture of active, inactive, and it seems to be conflicting information. So we're not totally confident around this, but we can also see the severity is very high due to some of the sources that we've had the data and how that's relating to other information and how that's relating to other indicators in the platform. We've indicated this is actually pretty serious. And ultimately, we've derived as part of this that this is indicated as an active indicator. What does that mean? I've, I've been able to get to some information. I've been able to understand and dig into the details around that. What I've been able to do is use stacks to download and obtain that information on my particular instance, on my particular stacks platform, which I can add data to as well, and I can track this information as well. But I've been able to do a very simple search. I've been able to click through and start to understand much more detail around the relevance, the context, and the situation of the security relevance here so that I can understand what I need to do. So, of course, what it's not doing is it's not telling me what I need to do as a next step. Now, that will absolutely vary according to the situation and circumstances. And, of course, that will be down to your, your situation as well. But what I have been able to do is take something which I've identified as being suspicious activity, in this case, communications to a domain in Vietnam, been able to understand much more details around that. And now I can make some decisions about how I want to block activity, monitor activity, and ultimately dig into what's been going on at the workstation as well. So I hope you found that useful. Just as a quick walkthrough of some of the capabilities of Stacks. Uh, I'll be doing much more on this and digging into some of the other features as well uh, in later videos, but I do hope you find this useful. Thank you very much.